Here are 10 blended tricks I wish someone told me when I started. This took me months to figure out through pain, trials and too many late nights. But for you, it's all here in one video. And if you're into hearts of a small lane, most of the problem you're facing right now, they end today. Trick number one, if inset fails, do this instead. If you've been doing hot surface modeling consistently, you probably hit this wall. You try to insert a phase and it collapses. Or worse, it overlaps, even with a small adjustment. And no matter how careful you are, it just breaks. Here's the fix. Don't fight the insert. Duplicate the phase instead. Select the phase, hit Shift plus B to duplicate. Press B to separate it, then scale it down and Extrude however you want. Once you got your shape, run a difference boolean with a virginal mesh. Boom. Clean detailing, no insert errors. Inset might fail, but you don't have to. Trick number two. If bevel is giving you problems, do this instead. There are three types of bevel nightmares most hot surface artists face. One, you add a bevel modifier and nothing happens. Two, the geometry too tight. You bevel it and boom, your mesh is found. 3. You are working on a complex model and the bevel makes your viewport sluggish as hell. So here's the move. Don't use real bevels. Fake it. How? Just add a bevel node in your BSTF shader normal input. Crank the radius to something like 8.0. That's it. Now your edge looks smooth and beveled. No geometry changes. No vertex collapse and no lag. It only works in cycle, not in EV, but let's be real. Cycle looks better anyway. It's one of the cleanest trick for heavy model and yeah, it's gonna feel like cheating. Trick number three, stop separating your mesh just to add materials. Yeah, I used to do this too. Back in the days, whenever I wanted to assign different materials, even to one object, I'd separate the mesh. It didn't matter if it's a one clean piece, I'd break it into a parts just to apply texture. Why? Because I didn't know how to assign material the right way. But here's how it actually works and it's so simple. Select the face or faces you want. In the material tab, hit the plus button to add a new material slot. Choose or create your materials. Click assign. Boom. Different materials on the same mesh. Trick number 4. Use multiple blender versions. This one's not about modeling. It's about workflow. And yeah, it's a bit crazy, but hear me out. Right now, I'm using four different Blender versions. But for most of you, even using just two will change everything. Why? Because when you stack all your add-ons like box cutter, decal machine, matrix X, machine tool, and more, your Blender gets bloated, laggy, crashy. So here's what I do. I use Blender 3.6 for only modeling. No rendering, no materials, no distraction. Just box cutter plus machine tools. Then I copy the model and paste it into Blender 4.0. That's my rendering setup. Here I load Matrix X, Decal Machine, all the juicy add-ons. And set up materials, lighting and final renders. That separation keeps everything fast, clean and crash-free. It's honestly one of the smartest workflow hack I ever added. The other two Blender versions? That's just for me being extra. But trust me, using even two is game changer. Trick number five, use cheat codes. It might sound unfair, but it's the truth. If you have the right add-ons, you get way more result in less time. And that's not lazy, that's smart. Add-ons are cheat codes. They give you professional looking work without wasting your life on boring stuff. Now I know most people are triggered when I say this. They are not real artists, they are cheating. Bro, I don't care. I'm here to tell you the truth. You don't need to be broke buying every overpriced tool. But if you are serious about hot surface modeling, here are the only cheat code you needed. First, box cutter. Instantly create boolean cuts, clean, fast, precise. Two, machine tool. Super useful hotkeys and modeling shortcuts. Three, decal machine. Adding sci-fi details and label with just one click. Four, matrix X. Yeah, my own and all. No UV, no node mess, just realistic texture in one click. And with the version 1.4.1, you can even bake texture automatically. Perfect for game asset, ceiling model, or just flexing in your portfolio. Trick number six, duplicate the smart way. 
Here's the mistake almost everyone makes. You need multiple copies of your model. So you hit Shift plus T and sure, it works. But now you've got multiple heavy objects, each one calculated separately during render. What does that mean? Laggy viewport, slow render, unnecessary pain. So here's the fix. Don't use Shift plus T, use Alt plus T. That creates a link duplicates. Same object, same data, but Blender only need to render the original. The others, they're just lightweight clones. So next time you need copies, hold Alt plus D and duplicate like a pro. Same visual, less data, trust the result. Trick number seven, fix your emission, especially in cycle. You ever rendered something in cycle, add emission, crank up the strength, but, but it still look flat, no glow, no bloom, just a bright color. Meanwhile in EV, there is a bloom checkbox and boom, you're glowing like an Iron Man. But in cycles, you gotta work smarter. Here's how to add a bloom effect in cycles. Go to the compositing tab, enable use nodes. You will see two default nodes, render layer, composite. Press shift plus D, add glare and drop it in between them. Set the type to bloom and adjust the threshold or mix for the glow intensity. That's it. Now when you render, you'll get a clean cinematic emission glow just like you imagined. Trick number eight, small light tweaking that makes a massive difference. You ever used an HDRI and your lighting still look flat? No shadows, no mood, just meh? Yeah, it's not the HDRI fault. It's because you skip one tiny adjustment that changes everything. Here's what to do. Make sure your node wrangler add-on is enabled. Select the world shader, then press Ctrl plus D. That adds texture coordinate and mapping node automatically. Now, here's the key. Adjust the Z rotation in the mapping node. Why? Because rotating your HDRI changes where the light hits your model. You're basically choosing your shadow direction and, and that's what gives your render depth. Start by increasing Z rotation by 30 degree each time. Find the one that casting the best shadow and highlights. Then fine tune in smaller steps like 5 out 10 until it feels perfect. That's it. One little slider and the lighting goes from amateur to cinematic. Trick number 9. Render fast, like really fast. Back in the day, I'd sit there watch Blender cook my render for 30 minutes. One artwork, half an hour. Now, I render in under 5 minutes. It's still looking fire, same quality, same look. Here's up. Step 1. Lower your samples, but smoothly. Go to viewport sample, set it to 150, and render sample to 180 to 200. Set the notch threshold to 0.03. That's the sweet spot. Grace quality, faster output. Step number two, light pad setting. Go to the render property, light pad, set all max bounds to eight, except volume. If you're using volume in your scene, then you need to increase it to five, but there's no volume, no need to worry about it. Set it to zero and set the interact light to five. This gives better light bounce and materialism, especially for glass, glossy or metal surface. Step 3. Enable persistent data. This keeps Blender from reloading unnecessary info. Save memories, improve render preps time. It basically free up performance. Step number 4. Fast GI approximation. Go to the performance tab. Enable fast GI approximation. Default is fine for most scenes. Step number 5. Simplify settings. Very important. Enable simplify. Set the viewport and render subdivision to 3. By default, it's I think 6, which kill performance, especially with downloaded models. Set it to 3, you barely notice a difference in visual, but your render time will drop dramatically. That's it. Your render speed just went from snail to sniper. Trick number 10. This is the final tip from me. Avoiding pinching as much as possible. If you ever adding bevel or subdivision, your model starts showing weird shading or broken edges. You're dealing with pinching. It's one of the most common and most annoying geometry issues in Blender. And if you don't handle it, your hot surface will look anything but hot. Let me give you an example. I've got a model with a simple corner shape. Now, if I select these corner edges and run a bevel, boom, pinching appears. Welcome buddy. You might think, okay, what if I also select the top edges and bevel that too? Yeah, technically you could do that, but it reshaped the model and you lose the clean silhouette. But here's the fix. 
First, what I'm going to do is select all the faces nearby and insert the face. This gives you a supporting edge loop. Use the knife tool to redirect the edge flow manually. Now when you bevel, everything is clean, smooth and best of all, no pinching. It's a little extra work but it's worth it. Your models stay clean, your shading stay perfect and hey, if you want a full tutorial on how to handle pinching the right way, drop a comment below and I'll make a deep dive guide just for you. So ladies and gentlemen. Those were my 10 hot surface modeling trick to help you skip the confusion and level up fast. I wasted years figuring out this, but now you got them all in one video. If you made it this far, I already know you're serious. So, so don't miss what's coming next. Subscribe for more exclusive content, game changing tutorials and deep blunder secrets. And if you got even one valuable tip today, drop a comment and let me know which one hit hardest. I'll catch you in the next one. I'm out.